what's up guys Sean the bro here and in today's episode we are going to be covering level sequences and cutscenes I want to start implementing cutscenes in my actual series that I have so I figured I would make some generic episodes on how to make cutscenes using level sequences actor sequences and a few other things within the engine that might not be entirely self-explanatory at first so this is the very first very basic episode of cutscenes and sequences I am going to be using my third person tutorial series to implement these, but you don't have to know anything about the series to watch this episode and follow along. You can do this in any project you want. Now before we hop into this episode, if you do want to check out the series that I'm using for today's episode, which is the third person tutorial series, you can see how we've done things like picking up equipment, attacking enemies, so on and so forth. I'll link this playlist up here in the top right corner if you do want to check it out. But again, it is not required. That's just if you're interested in any of the things you see on the screen here. Additionally, if you would like to support my Patreon, you can do so by clicking this link up here in the top right corner. You'll get added benefits for the different series as well as merchandise and things like that. And it really supports the channel. I usually bring this up at the end, but for a change, I just wanted to mention it in the beginning. Now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on the episode. And today's episode is going to be using level sequences to trigger some actions in the world that can be used for cutscenes. Now, in a cutscene, if we're using this method, there are a lot of different components we're going to have to deal with. For this first introductory episode, I am literally going to make this wall rotate in front of me. Yes, I still have control of my character. It's not really a cutscene. It's just an action going on in the world. But anything like this can be turned into a cutscene. As long as the cutscene is not pre-rendered, any movement of actors in the world or objects in the world is going to help us make the actual scene that we want to make. So for starters, let's just pick a basic thing that we want to do, such as rotate our wall, and let's make it happen. And so I'm going to pick this random wall object. You can pick literally anything in your level. It does not matter. Once you've decided what you want to animate, we need to get the Sequencer tab. And to do that, we can go up to the top where it says Window here and look for Sequencer. It was in Window, Cinematics, Sequencer right here. And once you select that, it will open up a tab somewhere called Sequencer. This is where we are going to create our animation for our cutscene. Now, I have my wall 7 here, which is this wall right here. You can see it in the world outliner. This is the object I'm selecting. But I'm going to do one with you live as well. That way you can see the entire process. So let's actually go ahead and create a new one first. Let's say we want to move this wall. Let's translate it up. Now, to actually create a level sequence, if you are in Unreal Engine 5, like I am here, you can select this option right here. It is the movie clapper or the movie slate right here, this little symbol. You can click on it, add level sequence right here. So if you do that, it will bring up this window where you have to save the asset. I went ahead and made a new folder called level sequences in my content browser. You can right click and press new folder to do that. And then I went inside of it and I made my level sequence, which I called level one sequence. We'll call this one level one sequence alt for alternate and we'll save it. Now when I do this, it automatically opens the sequencer tab. So you can either do what I said earlier to get to this tab, or you can just create a level sequence from there and it will open it. Either way it works. Now in Unreal Engine 4, this is pretty much the same. The only difference is there will be something that says cinematics. You'll want to select that and press add level sequence. But it's going to be in the same basic area that you see here for Unreal Engine 5. So don't be too worried if you're using Unreal Engine 4. It's going to be a very similar process. Anyway, once we have our sequence open, we can go ahead and add tracks. This is what I was mentioning earlier. So let's go back to our previous example. And let's say we want to translate this wall up. I can go ahead and click on this object in the world outliner. Right here, it's called wall 8. And so in this case, I want to change the transform of wall 8. So I'll press plus track and I'll go actor to sequencer and I can see all the actors that are in my level. Here's wall eight. This is the thing I want to move, like I mentioned. So we're going to go ahead and select that option. Once you do this, your actor should show up here and you should have all the possible parameters that you can alter during the level sequence. We want to translate this wall. That's a location change. So we want to open up transform open up location, then we have our X, Y, and Z values. So the X, Y, and Z are gonna be filled out with the current values that they are in the level. This is never going to change. 
until we make it change, right? It's going to be static. It's going to stay there the entire time until we decide to move it. What we want to do is add a key here. And we can do that by pressing this plus button right here. If you plan on changing the X, the Y, and the Z of the location, you can press this right here, the one that just says location, and it will add a key for each of those values. But if you only want to change one of them, for example, let's say we only want to change the Z value of my location, then I just need to add the key for the Z value. To do that, I can just press the plus right here next to the Z. And you see I have this little red node here on my timeline. This is my key for my Z value. Now to actually move this and translate it, it's super simple. We're gonna move this to the time that we actually want this animation to take. So if we go to 60, this stands for 60 frames. We say we want to move the wall to this point in a total duration of 60 frames. So at this point, we want to press the plus again to add a new key there. So now this is the length in which our sequence is going to alter the wall 8 object in our world. If we go ahead and change the Z position here on this key, right? The key that we just added at the 60 mark we can change it to something like 1000. And you can see the wall has moved up. Now, we don't want the wall to be currently up there when we start the level, we want it to move up there. As we move our timeline, you can see that's exactly what's happening. So at zero frames here, we have our wall where it's been the entire time we've been working on our game. And at 60 frames here, you can see that the wall is at our new position. Now, if we play our game, the wall is not gonna do anything. It is not playing the level sequence, so we made the level sequence, but we're not using it. In Unreal Engine 4, there will be a blueprints section here, and you can select that and say, open level blueprint. In Unreal Engine 5, it is this graph here. You select it and select open level blueprint. Now, I already have my begin play set up for this because I had done it for the wall seven that I had shown at the start of this episode. But of course, we're going through the process in full, so we need to make a new one for wall eight. So the first thing we need is begin play in the level blueprint. So essentially when the level is loaded, event begin play gets called. You may already have this when you come into the graph, but if you don't, you can just type event begin play and it will pop up. In here, we need to actually create or spawn the level sequence player. And it's very simple. We can just literally right click and type create level sequence player. And you'll get this node here. Now we want to select the level sequence that we actually care about. I'm going to select level one sequence alt this time since we want to test that one out instead. Now you do get the actor that was actually created from that or you can just get the return value here. We're going to be doing a lot more with this in this series in the future, so I'm not going to go into anything advanced right now. We're just going to use the return value and play it to make sure that it works. So drag off return value, type play, and then connect your begin play to it. Compile, save that. And now when we play the game, our wall should move up, and you can see that it did. And just to show you the wall seven that I promised you I would show you, if we go back to the sequencer, I need to open up a new level sequence. We can do this by going to the content browser, going to our level sequences and just selecting the old level sequence. So level one sequence, you'll see I have wall seven and wall eight here. I did separate them for video purposes. So I'm going to delete the wall eight one here on the old sequence. So this sequence right here is exactly what I was showing you at the start. That is the rotating wall that was at the front of the character here. So I added keys for my rotation on my wall seven. And as time went on, I changed the pitch rotation of the wall. So after 120 frames, the wall had done a full 180 rotation and moved back into place. I plan on covering every single one of these, but this is just a basic actor level sequence tutorial episode, so this will get you started on anything you want to do with that. Throughout the series, we are going to be doing so much with them, so be ready to make some really cool stuff with it.
Now, one last thing before we wrap up, you can chain together level sequences. So you see how I have my first one here and my second one here. You could play them both. I mean, you could also put them in one level sequence. You don't have to have two, but if you did have two for any number of reasons, you can chain them together just like this. So if we go ahead and play this, both of our walls should be moving and they are. I really hope you enjoyed the content of this episode, and if you did, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. I just really appreciate it. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube membership, Patreon members, and Discord supporters. You guys are amazing, and you keep this series alive, so thank you for all the love and support. I cannot say it enough. Thank you. If you've had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There is a link in the description, and all the support is completely free. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.